topic for today is harmony. Come on, say that with me again. Harmony. One more time, say harmony. That's our topic for today, day 32. Our background scripture is John chapter 4, verses 1 through 25. And this is talking about Jesus and his experience with the woman at the well. And our denial is individual differences do not limit my connection with others. And just because we're different does not mean that we're not connected. Because we're all sons and daughters of God, made in the image and likeness of God. We're all spiritual beings. We're all breathing the same breath of life. So therefore, we're already connected by our breath. Our um, affirmation is I am one with all people. And when we say all people, we mean all people, regardless of age, gender, race, educational level. So y'all know I do the list. Socioeconomic status, orientation, educational level, uh, criminal background, credit score. Uh, no matter what the difference, no matter what the distinction is, we are all one because we all come from God. Amen. And our kingdom principle for today is divine placement. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be in every area of my life. I cannot be where I'm not. I can only be where I am. Well, since we're talking about harmony, uh, when I woke up this morning, meditating, looking at and reading, the Spirit gave to me today three-part harmony. That's our topic for today, three-part harmony. How many have ever been a part of a choir? Uh, trio, a quartet, um, a praise team. If you've ever been a part of a singing group, whether it was in church, whether it was in elementary school, middle school, high school, community choir, if you've ever been a part of a choir, raise your hand. Give me some hearts. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some love. Let me know. Tell me, where were you singing? What choir were you on? Let me know. Have you ever been on a choir? Have you ever sang with a choir? Hey, maybe you never did that, but you went to a choir concert. I'm making a point of connection for you to be able to relate late to this three-part harmony. Have you ever been to a concert? Where have you ever seen a choir perform or, or, or a group minister? Have you ever had that experience? If so, give me some hearts, give me some love, give me some thumbs up. If you've ever been in a choir, if you've ever been to a choir concert. One of the beauties for me about a choir is that there is this three-part harmony, at least. Sometimes it's four. You know, sometimes it's five parts, you know, but it's at least the basic minimum with the choir that I've seen is that three-part harmony where you have the sopranos, the altos, believe it or not, I used to be a choir director. Shh, don't tell nobody. I used to direct the youth choir um, when I was growing up in church. And so I remember, and I was good, you know, bringing in the sopranos, bringing in the altos, and the uh, tenors. That's the basic three-part harmony. You gotta have uh, alt, you gotta have altos, you gotta have sopranos, you gotta have uh, at least tenors. And sometimes we have baritones or bass that would expand the harmony, but you at least needed that three-part harmony because the altos carried, I think it was coming back to me, the altos carried the melody. You know, and then they are harmonizing with the sopranos and with the tenors. And so you need that three-part harmony to get that choir sound, to get the fullness of it. You need at least the three-part harmony. And so um, in our text today with the woman at the well, her life was off key. I mean, there was this dissonance going on in her life. Her life was not harmonious. And so Jesus, our way show, had a conversation with her. And what I'm seeing in these stories this week, um, in these biblical accounts, that Jesus is changing people's lives by being who he is and awakening the Christ consciousness in them through conversation, through dialogue. He's having a conversation with this woman at the well. He came there because he was thirsty, physically thirsty. And he's having this conversation with this woman at the well. And her entire life is being transformed just by a conversation. And I'm saying today that as you unfold in Christ consciousness, as you follow Jesus as your way shower, don't be afraid to talk to people in the grocery store, the bus stop, talk to your co-workers, talk to your family members, talk to strangers. You know, having conversations with people and you being firm in who you are as a way shower opens up the conversation and the dialogue for transformation to happen 
during the conversation. That's right, I said it. Transformation happens during a conversation. It can happen. And so Jesus having a conversation, a dialogue between this woman, and he's seeing that her life is off key. And God desires for each one of us, as God's sons, as God's daughters, for our life to be a song that is melodious, that is on key, that has that three-part harmony going on. And so therefore, just for my life is a song, you know, that's on key. I got three-part harmony. Now I'm rhyming. Look at the poetic there. You know, my life is a song that is on key. Three-part harmony. Come on in front of that again. My life is a song that's on key and three-part harmony. And so therefore, this woman's life was not in harmony. It was in dis dissonance. You know, it was off key. Pulley point number one. The first part of the harmony is your relationship with God. And her relationship with God was off key. She thought that she was somehow less than a child of God because she was a Samaritan. You know, which means that she was part Jew and part Gentile. That when the Jews uh, intermarried with other races, then they produced these... Um, this mixed group of people, and they were called Samaritans. And so she thought that her relationship with God, um, that she was less than a child of God because of her race, because of her culture, because she was a Samaritan. But let me say this to you. One of the ways that you bring your life back on key is to realize that you are a son of God, you are a daughter of God, just like everybody else. And there is no other physical, mental, emotional distinction. There's nothing in this physical world that somehow makes you less that God has no stepchildren that's what I'm saying God has no step stepchildren God has no half children we're all God's children God has no and I know people are going to disagree with me on this but I'm going to say it anyway God doesn't even have any adopted children you know, that there's this idea that the Jews are really God's children, God's chosen people. And if you're not a Jew, then somehow you have to be adopted, you know, as God's child. And I'm saying today that God didn't have no stepchildren, no half-children, and no adopted children. That regardless of whether we are Jew or Gentile, born or free, male or female, in Christ, we lose those distinctions and we all become one. We all become equally God's children with all the rights and all the privileges and all of the benefits that go along with being God's child. So I'm pulling point number one is her relationship with God was off key. The harmony between her and God. She did not realize her oneness with God. She did not realize that she was a spiritual being made in the image and likeness of God. She didn't realize that she was an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. She didn't know that. And so therefore, pulley point number one, her relationship with God was off key. And let me tell you this, when your relationship with God is off key, it's going to affect every relationship in your life. That's the first part harmony that you that is important, imperative, and essential that you get on key is your relationship with God. Pulley point number two, so if your because her relationship with God was off key, then that means her relationship with herself was off key. It affected her self-esteem, her self-image, her self-worth, because once the uh, harmony is thrown off with your relationship with God, if that is off, if that's off key, if, if that's, you know, if you're experiencing, you know, tone deaf, where you're not able to hear uh, God and know God's voice for yourself and, and follow that still small voice, it's going to make you, your relationship with yourself, off key. And many times, people are walking around and they look wonderful on the outside, but their relationship with themselves is off key. Key. Somehow they feel that something is missing in their lives, that it's broken, and something in their life is out of place. And if your relationship with God is off key, then that means your relationship with yourself is not going to be on key. It's not going to be harmonious. It is going to be off key. So get straight your relationship with God, pulley point number one, then your relationship with yourself. Because it is only through your relationship with God that you really know who you are. 
that you have a firm identity that is not tossed and, you know, going all around and up and down and in and out and back and forth because I know who I am. I know whose I am. And so I love myself. I accept myself. I take care of myself because my relationship with God is on key. So my relationship with myself is going to be harmonious. Yes. Come on. Let's get some thumbs up, some hearts. How many of us are experiencing a harmonious relationship with ourselves? Yes. The Bible says that Jesus took all those Ten Commandments and reduced them down to three. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. There's that three-part harmony. Love God, love yourself, love everyone else. It is just that simple. Simple harmony in life is loving God, realizing your oneness with God, loving yourself, taking care of yourself, and then you're able to love everybody else. And so pulling point number three is harmonious, having a harmonious relationship with others, her relationship with others. So she was not able to really have that dialogue with Jesus, to these questions, the dissonance. The fact that her life, with her relationship with God, her relationship was off key. So when Jesus is talking about give me some water, she looking at him like, don't you know that I'm a Samaritan and you are a Jew? We don't have no dealings. That was that off key. She didn't even feel like she could have a conversation with him because her relationship with God herself was off key. Her relationship with Jesus started off in this conversation off key. But Jesus was able to, to hit the key on the piano and give her her note. He was able to give her her note. He was able to show her that your life can be on key. And so through a conversation with Jesus, she got the note. She was able to hear her part. And Jesus said, because um, that relationship with, uh, with God and with herself was off, then her relationship with other people was off with Jesus. That's why she had uh, five husbands. And the one that she had in her bed at home was not hers either. Because it was impossible for her to have a proper harmonious relationship with men, you know, intimately, when her relationship with God was off. And her relationship with herself was off. So her relationship with men, Jesus, and any other man was going to be off because the, her song of life was off key. And so Jesus said, go get your husband. She said, I don't have one. He said, you said that right. You've had five husbands and the one you got is not yours. And when she heard the truth, when Jesus told her that the well of water, the water that I'm going to give you, you drink this water, you're going to thirst again. But the water that I give you will be inside of you. Jesus went to the internal. Jesus went to where she was off key and said the water that I will give you will be a well of water springing up into everlasting life that you will never thirst again. If you get your relationship with God on key and your relationship with yourself on key, you will not be thirsty for the things of this life, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And so I'm saying to you, beloved, I'm saying to you today that she was able to get her relationship uh, with God on key. She was able to get her relationship with herself on key. And so then she was able to get her relationship with others on key. She said, well, how do you know? Um, because she went into a city. And she said, come see a man that has told me everything that I've ever done. And you heard the song. Ah! You heard the melody. You heard the part. You heard everything in her life coming together. In that moment, it doesn't take a long time. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, in a conversation, everything that is off key in your life can come together. And she had this song, and she went off in the city singing the song. Look at me, I have been set free. And she said, come on, you can have the same melodious, on key, three-part harmony life too. Come on. Let me show you how I did it. She did it. She said, come see a man. What she was really saying is come see a way shower. See someone who caused me to get my life on key, to make my life a song that is melodious. Well, I'm thankful for you. I'm so grateful that you've been a part of the Daily Download. Share this on your page today. If you know somebody whose life is experiencing dissonance and it seems like things are off key, that it's not harmonious, because let me tell you, we're always working with three things, health, wealth, and relationships. Harmony and our desire for our body is to be healthy. 
Our desire for our finances is to be wealthy. Our desire for our relationships are for them to be in harmony. So she was working with the stuff that we're all working with. And let me say this to you today, that you can, it is possible, open up your heart, open up your mind to see the possibility. Share this message. She ran in the city and told everybody, if you can run on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and share today like she shared because her life was on key. Uh, share this with somebody today. You can sow a seed. You can meet a need. You can boost this post so that we can get this message out to other people today. Also, at 7 o'clock on my personal page, Durrell R. Pulley, we're going to go into prayer because it's Wednesday. And so we're going to pray with you today. You'll be able to give your prayer request. So at 7 o'clock, uh, which is 7 minutes from now, join me on my personal page, Durrell R. Pulley, and let's pray together. Let's bring our lives back on key. Let's bring the harmony, the uh, sopranos, the altos, the tenors of our life. Let's bring it all together in a melodious song. Until tomorrow morning at 6.30, I don't know what you call him. I call him Jesus, my way shower.